Hey, what's up everybody? I want to do a quick demo on doing SFML shapes. Um, I'm basing this off of um, the tutorial that they put up on the SFML site, which I actually think hits on all the main parts pretty well. Um, but I'm going to do kind of the simple shapes um, in this demo, and then I'll do some fancier shapes um, in a later demo, um, just to keep the videos a little bit shorter and more bite-sized. So. First thing we want to do is we want to get a sense of how SFML handles the shapes. And SFML has changed from the most recent version, 2.1, has, has a little different take on, on making shapes than in, uh, in previous versions like the 1.6, which um, I'm more familiar with than, than the 2.0. But um, in the past, we had a very, um, you, you put everything in when you made the shape, you, you told it where it was, what color it is, and all these things, and now you do it um, slightly different. So um, I'm just going to make a uh, simple shape, and, and I'm not going to do any animation or anything, so I can actually declare the shapes as soon as I, um, even before I make the window, I can kind of declare them anytime I want. So the simplest shape is called SF Circle Shape. Um, and it's just a type, just like, you know, an integer or whatever. So um, that's the type, and then I give it a name. I'm just going to call it my circle, because that's simple. And then it takes one argument, which is the radius of said circle. Okay? Um, and so when we make an object, this is the simplest object we can make. We basically made a shape, gave it a name, and gave it a radius. So right now it's actually positioned in the upper left corner of the screen um, right around where the origin is so this is SFML's big take on shapes is it says we're gonna make them all in the same spot and then we're gonna move them to um, the spot that that we want them to be in so um, to draw the shape so we'll just draw the basic not moved shape so first we created it and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the draw function of the window and we tell it what thing to draw. So SFML draws in in two steps. Let's put the W on there. Is that it builds up a list of things it wants to draw. So that's kind of the, the drawing cue as if it were. And then at the end of your program usually you want, don't want to call this too much. If you actually call display too much it'll it'll crash your program. But the display basically says oh Go look at the, the queue that we've made up with um, our draw command and then just draw them in the order they came in. Okay, and uh, we'll see see that in a second here. So, if I just give this a quick run, oh, it's really mad at me. Why? Because, oh, my circle is not declared in the scope because I <clears throat> don't spell very well. So, here we go. Um, and there we go. We had a plain white circle, and you'll see that it's in this... Um, Kind of upper corner and if you kind of look at it really carefully you can sort of see that you know there's a gap here it didn't like center it on zero zero but really what it did is it made a shape inside of a little box here and that distance um, basically it fit inside of a box that would touch that corner so um, that's important later on we'll, we'll talk about using um, some of the built-in stuff for shapes it's it makes sense why that that's the case um, later on and how they designed it. So, anyway, so we got we got to do more interesting stuff than just uh, make my circle. So, right off the bat, you could say, well, what are the things I could do? Well, probably the easiest one is we have a bunch of built-in member functions in this object. Um, we'll start spelling circle properly, and we can do something like set fill color. You notice that I'm using the new version of code blocks. It does a lot better at, at guessing what you want to do. So I say set fill color. And then I can pull up the SF color object. Now there's there's a lot of different ways to go um, with this. The SF color object is really cool. You it has a lot of built-in. Um, so you can say, you know, red or something like that. And there's actually constant colors. There's blue, there's black, magenta, yellow, white. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, that's great. But I, I'm, you know, being very color savvy, um, I can actually just use RGB or I can actually use RG, 
be with an alpha layer. So um, what that means is I could do something like 3400255 to set the color. Um, you know, give it a little bit in two channels. So zero is nothing. 255 is is maxed out. Um, sound good? Okay. So here we go. Now we've set the color here. And if we run it real quick, okay, you'll see we got sort of a, a bluish color because it's RGB. I put a little bit of red and a lot of blue. So you get a little bit of purpley blue. That's great. Okay, so um, obviously you can play around with that a little bit. Now, if you actually give it a little bit of, let's say, a fourth category, and you run this, you'll notice that it all of a sudden turned a little darker. Well, why is that? Um, this fourth category is the alpha channel, and that actually affects transparency. When we get two shapes going on, we'll see exactly what we mean by that. Actually, um, well, 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 we'll see it in a second here. Um, so anyways, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now, let's say I want to do something uh, like move it into a better position. I could do my circle dot set position. Okay, and where do I want to send it? Well, I could give it an X and Y value to like, I want to send it to 100, I don't know, 400, something like that. That's, that's a good way to do it. Um, I, I actually think how SFML is set up, it's better to use the vector 2F object that they use to kind of hold points and other two-dimensional things. And th there's a big reason for that. Um, one is it's, you know, nice if you think in terms of vectors. Um, there's some, some good ideas of that. But, but actually, SFML has a lot of things that return vectors or expect vectors. Um, and so a lot of the functions basically said, hey, we get tuples of data a lot, so we have this object to handle that, and, um, you know, why not use it a little bit more? So you can see here, I set the position and it, it, it put it down here. Now, we have a couple of other um, built-in functions and it might be like, well, clearly there were a lot. Like when I popped up that list, there were tons. So how do I find out what are all the things that my circle can do? So this is where I, I think it's really useful to learn about the resources section of the SFML page. So if I click on resources, and you go down here, you see how there's a API documentation. This tells you all the stuff that's in each of um, these classes. So if you click on classes, we can go and we can find our circle shape right here. And we click on this, and all of a sudden it tells us all of our public member functions. And it also tells us this is a really cool thing. It tells us the inheritance diagram. It says, well, circle shape is a subset of shapes. That means the the stuff that's in shape, we get to borrow, okay? And same thing, I can draw it, I can transform it, and that turns out to um, tell you a little bit about how SFML decided to organize their stuff, which is great. So here, look at all this cool stuff we can do. We can change the radius on the fly, we can get it to tell us our radius, um, we can figure out the points in the circle, that's something that'll come up in a little bit. Um, cool little trick we can do. We can get textures. We'll talk more about that in a later video. So you can, you know, put like a bitmap or a PNG file on there to get some cool stuff. You can clearly do outlines. Um, you can get get the global bounds. This is kind of an interesting thing. This is going to be useful for um, seeing if I hit something, right? So I can figure out what the bounding rectangle is and then use that in some calculations, right? Set rotation, set scale so I can stretch it, rotate it, set the origin. If I don't want it to be um, the origin to be in that upper left corner, I could actually do a calculation to set the origin in the middle of the circle, which might be something that we often want to do. Um, I can get its position and notice how it returns a vector 2f. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff here, okay? Um, this is kind of an interesting thing down here, these transforms. So you guys that are really 
um, into fancy graphics, you can actually apply a variety of transforms to the object, and then actually there's this transform object that will basically give you a mathematical representation of all the stuff you've done to it. Um, pretty neat. So then if you really care about these default things, you can go and look at exactly what they all do. But I really encourage you when you use a new object, take a look at that. So, um, so right here I did set fill color, I did set position, that's pretty cool. So now let's, let's do a, a nifty trick with this. It turns out that circle shape has an overloaded constructor and I'm going to make something called my pent and I'm going to make it have radius 50 and I'm also going to put a little comma 5 there. And what that's actually telling me that I can do is that I can basically make something with radius 50 and I'm actually going to use five points to make my quote circle which is really going to give me a regular polygon with five sides. Okay, So we can do my pent dot set fill color Hey, what are we going to do? SF color. I'm going to be a little boring and just go for straight red. Okay. And then I am going to do my pent dot set position SF vector 2F. Now I'm going to do something so they overlap a little bit. And so we can test something out real quick. Um, so I'm going to have it be um, at the same Y position but slightly shifted over on the X. So these guys should overlap. Hopefully everybody agrees with that and hopefully I didn't do something horrible. So now I actually have to draw my pentagon. So notice the order that I put this in. First I'm drawing the circle, then I'm drawing the pentagon. So let's see what that looks like. Uh-oh, we're mad. Um, set position. Spelling is always a tough thing. So should have noticed that because it didn't come up in the little helper. So notice that when we look at this, my pentagon is clearly very much on top of my circle. Well, because I drew it second, it shows up on top. Um, hooray, no big surprise. Let us flip these around. Draw one before the other. Okay. Do that really quick. Notice that I can, wait a second, I can see my pentagon it didn't get covered up remember how we talked about putting in that alpha layer over here okay the the 128 there is so we made it about half transparent so now we have a cool thing where we can see this color mixing happening so we got our you know kind of bluish shape we put the red shape underneath it it's transparent so we see this nice uh, purpley magenta color uh, right there so that's a really um, um, cool thing we can do with transparencies um, to get get some neat effects and that's uh, pretty fun so um, that's the um, the basic you know circle and circle shape the other one 